What is the most heartbreaking thing your child has told you? Not my child, but I taught special education so one of my students. He said, I wasn't born stupid. My stepdad made me this way. He had a traumatic brain injury resulting in mental retardation. I spent my planning period sobbing. God, I can't even imagine living a life like that, where you remember things were different but can never recover to that place. Not my kids but my ex's little girl, grabbed my hand in the supermarket and said I am so happy you are my dad's loved one. He broke up with me a few days later completely out of the blue. I've never been good with kids but it breaks my heart when I think about it. I remember what someone said in an earlier thread and I can't find it but it went something like this. When you break up with a person who has a kid, you don't just break up with that person. You break the emotional bond you and the kid created which to me is powerful stuff. There was a 9 year old boy sitting during youth choir rehearsal with tears flowing down his cheeks throughout. Normally, he was very upbeat and enthusiastic about participation, but not this particular day. After rehearsal, I took him aside and asked what was wrong. He said that the wake for his grandmother's funeral was taking place and his parents wouldn't let him go because they thought he was too young to handle it. He just looked at me and said, I love my grandmother, and I want to be with her. It's always difficult to tell if kids are ready for that kind of stuff. Funerals wakes, that kind of thing. It probably isn't a bad idea to ask if they would like to go, especially if they were close to the person like it seems this child was. I work at a daycare. One of my 4 year old's newborn sister died, and the little boy told me my sister's an angel now, but I want her to be a kid. I work at a daycare too, with 2 year olds, and this would kill me. Luckily they're still at the age where, currently, a little boy in my class thinks he is pregnant with his big sister. There's something about the mommy is having another kid conversation he just couldn't grasp lol. My little sister to my mom after having her eye removed and enduring a year of chemo, retinoblastoma cancer, my fake eye is in, my hair has grown back, I'm back in school, I finally feel like a normal kid, she put on such a brave face throughout the whole ordeal. My sister went through lots of treatment and her biggest wish was just to feel like a normal kid. People would treat her like a charity case and I knew how much it annoyed her. No matter how hard it was she didn't want much help. If you are going to hurt me, just get it over with. My husband and I adopted a troubled teen who came from a line of abusive foster homes. This was about 4 months after living with us, and we got angry at her for something. I don't remember what. Her did not mean a slap. It meant chalk, punch, or something much worse. It had been a long few years but she doesn't fear her own parents anymore. You and your husband are good people. You have changed someone's life for the better and forever. I was babysitting my niece and nephew. Niece was 6 and nephew was a year. I was holding the baby and tickling him and stuff when my niece asked me why do you love my brother more than me broke my heart. I tried to explain that babies just need more attention because they can't do things for themselves like she can. She just said that's what my mom says, too, in this sad voice like she still thought everyone loved her brother more. I try to spend a little more one on one time with her now, and I think she's doing a little better now that her brother is old enough to run around and play with instead of just a screaming potato. As part of my long practicum, I was a student teacher in a grade 3 stroke 4 class that had a girl with extreme behavior issues, lying, stealing, tantrums, running away, physical aggression, etc. She could be really sweet and charming when she wanted to be, but had no control over her emotions and wasn't able to make keep friends. Nobody ever wanted to sit with her or work on projects with her, and nobody invited her to join their games at lunch or recess. One day she got into a screaming match with some girls who wouldn't let her play a skipping game with them, and had to be pulled out of the gym. I was sitting with her in the hallway trying to talk to her about what happened, when she burst into helpless tears the first genuine ones I'd seen from her, and said, I know it's my fault they don't like me, but I try so hard to be good and I just can't. I'm so mean and angry all the time and I don't know why. I just want my dad to come take me away. Her dad died in a car accident two years earlier. Oh man that is so rough. When I lost my best friend. At 28. I think I behaved a lot like that little girl. Grief is a freaking powerful thing. Hope she's doing a bit better. 
I'm a single father to a 7 yo boy. He was very close to my dad. My dad, God love him, was an alcoholic and died at 56 3 years ago. One night while my son and I were back in my hometown for his funeral, we were just sort of hanging out on the couch and my son tears up a bit and says daddy, promise you won't ever die. Not really thinking I replied buddy, we all go sometime. Are you afraid of not having a daddy around to help you? He replied no, I'm afraid of of not having you left to love me. It brought on the heartbreak for sure. As the product of a single dad I feel they don't get enough credit. You are doing something awesome. I'm 24 years old I'm afraid to lose him. I was talking to this 8 year old boy whose aunt burned his hand on the stove as punishment. He said my aunt burned my hand, but I forgive her. I was so moved by his innocence and being able to forgive so easily despite having to go through something so traumatic and painful. My son was 8 or 9 when he said maybe when I'm in high school people won't make fun of me anymore and my heart shattered. I had gone up against a school district who called children's services on us in retaliation for reporting the teacher who was bullying my son. I had gone toe to toe with this man. I couldn't do the same with the kids at his new school. He had bruises on his neck from being choked, marks on his arm from those Indian burns or whatever that lasted two days. Bruises he shouldn't have had, that couldn't be explained. He was making up upset stomachs and headaches and other ailments to get out of school. His stepmom and I called repeatedly, tried everything. Finally things stopped, and he's now 11 and happy, but it was a heartbreaking year and I'll never forget those words. I don't think daddy loves me, his dad and I have joint custody with week on week off, every once in a while he will randomly state something about how he doesn't think his dad loves cares about him and refuses to go into more detail just saying I just know mom. Please look into this further, it sounds like something could be going on at his dad's place, and it could damage him really badly. Not my child, but my little brother, when he was about 5. I found him walking around the house weeping, not crying out loud for attention but silently weeping to himself. I stopped him and asked him what was wrong and he just looked up at me through tears and said, I'm just having a bad day. Freaking broke my heart. Five year olds shouldn't have bad days. Not me, but my parents. After I got my first pair of glasses at four years old my parents took me to the park where I said I can see the mountains. The mountains were in clear view of this park. They felt so bad that they still bring it up to this day. I'm going to be 22 this year. The second time was when I was in kindergarten and I had to draw a picture of my family. When my parents saw the picture my dad asked where am I I replied you're never home. After that he went to his boss and told him that he needed to change his hours because his daughter didn't include him in her family drawing. That's beautiful and painful. We recently had a friend lose their 3 year old daughter. It brought up a lot of conversations about death with our 5 year old that were just tough for me as a parent. I know it's a part of life, and I think we handled everything well but it broke my heart to have to explain everything to him. A week or so after the funeral, he asked what would happen to him and his younger sister if we, his parents, died. He asked if they would be alone and who would take them to school. I explained that his grandparents would, but they would probably go to a different school then and he told me if you die when I'm a grown up but sister isn't, I will take care of her and I will take her to school. It kind of killed me, I don't know, it's nothing so tragic, but having him come to some sort of understanding about loss was really hard on me. Not my child but when my sister was 4 her dad skipped town but he still occasionally video called her promising her toys and ice cream etc but never delivered. One morning our mum had to work and her dad promised he would pick her up and take her out for a few hours while mum worked but never showed up. I ended up taking her out and while we were walking she suddenly started crying and asked me why doesn't my daddy love me? My 10 year old sister. I try very hard. I don't miss many classes and I do my homework by myself, but I only get C's and B's. Aubrey misses so many but she always gets A's. It makes me tired. My mother and I know Aubrey's mother from work. She is a teacher who has joked with us about how she does her daughter's homework assignments. And Aubrey hasn't been to school more than 3 days in a week all year because she wasn't feeling it today. It makes me sad that my sister is losing her enthusiasm for learning. She's the sort of kid who finds odd obsessions. Right now it's Helen Keller and Jean Goodall. 
and she researches them and reads about them near constantly, because she can't compete with 40 year old university educated helicopter mothers, and her teachers should know enough to see the work in school and the work from home just doesn't match up. I'd probably just tell the kid that Aubrey isn't doing her own work, the teacher will probably hear about it sooner or later then. My son aged around 6 or 7, looking up from a book, is Santa real, me, do you really really want me to tell you, him, having thought for a moment, yes, I really want to know, me, okay then, he isn't real, he's just a lovely idea, and daddy and I buy the presents that go in your stocking, he nodded and carried on reading, a minute or two later I looked over and he was sobbing silently, I hugged him and he said, I knew it wasn't real, but I so wanted it to be, we cried together, I still do stockings and they open them on our bed, ages 29, 27 and 23. Tell him what my parents told me, Santa is real, in that he is an idea, whenever you do a kind deed, in that moment, you are Santa, whenever anyone does the right thing, they are Santa, he was a real man who lived long ago, and he did good deeds and helped many people, we are supposed to learn from him, and do the right thing, so that everyone can feel good. My son, literally this morning, told me that he wishes his mom would take a job at his daycare so he could see her more. She's in the navy, stationed on a ship, and even when they're not out she's normally working late or standing duty. I haven't decided if I should tell her about it though. I just have a discussion with her about maybe not re-enlisting when the time came. She can't do much about it now, but when the time comes it would help. I'm very much in the camp of service men and women doing their duty, but every child needs their parents. Promise not to leave like mom did. I went through a rough divorce in the military and attempted suicide. My parents used us to swing custody of my daughter. Her mother left us one day and never came back. She was 4 when mom left, 6 when she asked me. She's 9 now. Still hasn't seen her mother. I'm still here. I'm still here. Proud of you stranger. My son was talking to his little sister about the tooth fairy. He told her that the tooth fairy brings money for the first few teeth, but then forgets to come for the rest. Turns out that he had lost a couple of teeth that he didn't tell my wife and I about and just believed in the magic of the tooth fairy. I felt so bad. He got a letter in the mail a few days later from the tooth fairy with a $20 in it that apologized to him. She had broken a wing and couldn't get his teeth until a little while later. That was the perfect response on your part though. My daughter, 9 at the time told me I said to all my friends that you have a job and you're smelling again. I had spent 3 years dealing with depression, and I had lost 7 jobs in the same time period. The previous day, my boss told me he would keep me. During these years, I did my best to hide it but she knew it was a troubled time. I hate my brain, it won't be quiet and I want to read. She's got ADHD and is doing so much better on meds now. She can actually do things she wants to do. Seeing your child so helpless and annoyed at themselves is awful. I spend a lot more time with the kids than my husband, because he works a lot. Our 3 year old asked me the other day, is daddy gonna come over tonight? And I was like yep, yeah, daddy lives here, of course he will come over tonight. And he said, no, daddy lives at work, and that broke my heart. Wish life was a little different, so we could both be with the kids all the time. This past school year having my 11 year old cousin, mind you he is on the spectrum but high functioning and one of the sweetest, most tender hearted kids I've ever known, come home from school and say I don't want to be here anymore, he's been bullied by his friends, I don't mean typical kids being general jerks, these kids would hit on him, choke him, call him retarded and encourage him to kill himself. I've been in his shoes and it shattered my heart to know he'd felt this way. So, I told him buddy I promise it'll get better. I'll take care of it. Long story short my grandmother and I went to the school board with all of the evidence that these kids had been abusive to him as well as the teachers and administrative staff neglecting the ongoing scenario. Previous shithead friends were removed from the school and put into the alternative school. He's doing much better and has made fantastic friends this time around. See? That makes me so happy to hear that you got an actual resolution and that he's doing better. So I'm switching the pov here. When I was a youngster it was just me and my mom. 
Dad was out of the picture. I had once told her, I have no choice but to love you, you're my mom. It's like I'm being forced to. I meant it at the time as, I only love you because I have to. In other words saying I didn't truly love my mother. I think I actually broke her heart a little. Years later I apologized, remembering about it. Now we're our chill as ever. Luckily we have an amazing relationship. My parents divorced when I was young ABD I told my mom I wanted to go live with my dad. Mom was the parental figure, dad was the fun parent. And when she sat me down to talk about it and had me explain why, I told her I liked dad better than her, like you. I apologized years later and things are okay. I love both my parents, even if they're both a little strange in their own ways. I cut my fingers with the scissors on purpose. It feels good but then it hurts. She's 8, we're getting her anxiety treated, but now we're in the middle of changing her dosage and extra therapy. That's tough for a parent to hear, but it's really good that she has parents who care and are responded appropriately. I started cutting in first grade and I certainly didn't tell my parents because I already knew what the response would be. Oh man my mom told me the worst thing ever was when she took my brother to the doctor they had to give him a spinal tap because he was getting bruises really easily so they wanted to test for leukemia. It was negative he's fine. But when they held him down and put the huge needle in he screamed and looked mom in the eye crying that he was sorry and he'll be good and be a good boy forever and ever. Broke her heart and she had to tell him over and over that he was already a good boy and he did nothing wrong. From then on out she was so traumatized she swore she would pay whatever money and time it consumed to put us under for any kind of painful procedures and we would get to go to the toy store wherever we had to go get vaccinations. It worked because even if we didn't like the needle we knew after it we would get a toy. That and about 2 years later when I busted my head open on the corner of a fireplace I needed stitches and she shelled out a lot of cash just so they would give me anesthesia so I wouldn't feel or remember anything. Brother doesn't remember any of that spinal tap at all now but boy it messed mom up good. When you look across the room and feel as if your heart were being ripped apart right in front of you. When we were pregnant with our second, it was twins and we kept it quiet for as long as we could. We told our 5 year old and she told all of her friends mommy is having two babies. Well, at 16 weeks we lost one of them. Hearing her tell her little best friend she was only getting one sibling instead broke me. My 9 yo cousin turned to me and asked, why doesn't mummy want me? I couldn't answer that. Her mother had sent her all the way from Thailand to stay with my family because she couldn't take care of her. If you live in a first world country, then it's because mummy wants you to get a good education, job and life. My 3 year old daughter asked, mama. Are you sad because I was silently crying to myself while holding her? I lied when I said that I was just tired. She then asked, Does Dada make you sad again? I lied that no, he doesn't make me sad. But she, even as a 3 year old, had an idea of the truth. Not me but my aunt. One day out of the blue her 4 year old daughter said to her please don't die. I'd be really sad. I don't want to live without you. After 4 weeks in hospital and 3 neurosurgical operations within 1 week my 5 year old was diagnosed with an aggressive cancer in his brain and spine. We sat on his hospital bed as he drew a rainbow and told me to cry happy tears. 4 years later and I'm still regularly tearing up thinking about that night. He is still here and doing great, so happy tears indeed. I move abroad with my little family. 2 days ago she said this is not my real house. My real home has flower and a green room fun to play in. She is 3. My heart broke. I took away her real home. AWW. Don't feel bad. That's the house she remembers but really you are her home. I'm afraid dad's going to hit me because I'm not the baby anymore. My 5 year old daughter when he had a child with his girlfriend. The kids are now adults and don't want anything to do with him. Not bad mouthing him was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But he did a better job with negative PR than I ever could have. When I started medication for depression anxiety my 4 year old told me when I was a baby you weren't happy. Now you're happy and I felt so bad because I tried oh hide it from her and failed. When my son was 11, he went out trick or treating with his friends. He had been getting bullied on his school bus by some high school kids, to the point where I had to switch his bus completely. Well, 
Apparently he and one friend ran ahead of the parent chaperoning, as it was the end of the night and they wanted to hit a few extra houses before heading home. They were THRN spotted by the bullies. He said the girl in the group said hey look, it's the kid everyone hates and they surrounded him. They took his bag of candy, dumped it on the ground and proceeded to stomp it into an unsalvageable mess, while laughing at him. The look of utter defeat, and his sobs when he got home and told me about it, broke my heart that night. My husband wanted to go find them and kick their asses. I've never felt so sad and helpless as that moment. When I went to work that night and told the other nurses, they banded together and gave me a huge bag of candy to give him. Frick those kids. But hooray for the other nurses. The other day, my boy laughed. It was a wonderful sound, and a joy to see his face while laughing. But it made me very sad. I realized in that moment that I hadn't heard him do that in a very long time. When my dad came out of surgery 5 or so years ago with no hair and those big metal staples across his scalp, my little brother said, he doesn't look like daddy anymore. I miss Nana. All the time she said what's Nana done now? Nana is a borderline alcoholic who works and then goes to parties with her friends and is no longer allowed to have her grandchild overnight after a couple of incidents involving her bad judgement. Nana rarely ever visits her oldest grandchild but is involved almost daily with the younger ones who live closer to where she works. It's heartbreaking to hear my child say that and it makes me angry on her behalf. When she talks to her, my mother promises so many things and then never delivers them. I had spent a long time trying to support my spouse and trying to keep our relationship intact for the sake of our son, but eventually I was in the process of leaving my spouse because of her severe psychiatric problems, her cheating, her domestic abuse, and her neglecting our then 5 year old son. Our son said a lot of heartbreaking things during that time. I'll never forget him running his toy sword across his arm as he pretended to cut himself and proudly saying look, I'm just like, other. Mommy, all the time she had a breakdown during a supervised visit and our son crying as I walked him home, asking mommy, why doesn't, other, mommy like me, is it something I did, but by far the worst was when I had to tell him she had committed suicide, I told him that, other, mommy had hurt herself too badly this time and she had died, I had gathered his school counselor, his personal counselor, my mother, and I all together to support him after I told him, as I was anticipating him breaking down and needing extensive support. Instead he just said, oh, is that all? Okay. Do we get her cat? He never questioned it. He never cried for her. Though a few months later when the cat got sick and we had to have him put to sleep, he sobbed for his kitty. He's not a tiny sociopath. It kills me inside that I tried to make things work for so long and let him get to that state in the process. My mom is chilling right next to me, so I asked her, and her response was when I told her I was molested and raped for two years by a former neighbor. She said she felt like she failed as a parent because she said she should have seen the signs. My poor mom, who's still married and living with my dad, was the only one who stuck by my side through it and went to every court date and crime victim counseling meeting with me. Not my dad. Not my brother. No one. My mom is a true hero. But sometimes I think she needs therapy because she's just as damaged as me from it. If there was any justice in the world, anyone who ever seriously considered hurting a child would just drop dead on the spot. My daughter started telling me this weekend about a male friend, she's in high school, that started getting upset if she did not respond to his texts right away, and would constantly be telling her that she needs to get right back to him because he needs to know where she is. It made my skin crawl. We discussed that this is how a controlling person starts out trying to isolate you. I can only hope that we raised her with enough self-respect and confidence to stop this before it escalates. It's heartbreaking because I feel as if I can't protect her. Not my child, but something my 5 year old niece once said. She was staying with us, me, and my parents, at the time since her mother was yet again in jail. She walks up to my mom, tugs on her shirt, and says Gama, are you going to leave me too? I tend to be unmoved by things most of the time, but that freaking destroyed me everyone else in the room. 
We went through an equally turbulent childhood, my sister and I, so she knew exactly what she was doing to this innocent child and didn't care. I would like to say it all turned out alright, but life isn't like the movies. They, she, and her siblings, were eventually taken by the state and adopted out. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.